Hello and welcome to another Lotro Top 5 video with me Balfellian. In this series I come up with my personal top 5 in a given category and give my reasons for what makes them my best picks. Keep in mind that my picks are my own opinion but where possible I'll back up my opinions with facts for why I think my top 5 are the top 5. Last time we were looking at classes in Lotro but since there are only 10 classes in the game at the time of writing I decided to make this a top 10 video instead and split it up into two parts. If you missed part one, be sure to check that out before continuing. In producing the rankings, I'm taking a look at multiple factors which might make one class better than the others, and leave my own personal preferences out of the ranking process, otherwise the order of this list would be massively different. Factors that I'm taking into consideration for the rankings include how fun and easy is the class to learn to play in terms of its skills and any unique gameplay elements, how fun and easy is the class to solo with, how good is the class at low, middle and high levels, and how useful and desirable is the class in a fellowship or group. Factors that I'm not taking into consideration for the ranking are whether or not the class is a premium purchase, as all classes are being considered equal, and my own personal opinions on playing the class, though I will give my personal thoughts on each class after the rankings have been determined. In this episode, we're going to start at rank 5 and work our way down to rank 1. If you missed part 1, be sure to check out that video. Since we will then have covered all 10 classes, it means that there will be no honourable mentions this time around. The Captain was Lotro's original multi-purpose support class, and can function in melee damage, tank and healing roles. Although Captains can function in all three roles when traded appropriately, they're not quite as effective as a specialist class in one of those roles. Changes to the way damage and particularly threat are handled over the years have made it considerably easier for the captain to operate in a tanking role. Similarly, changes to the captain's healing traits with the addition of trait trees in the Helm's Deep expansion have improved the captain's healing role. The captain can also summon a limited variety of humanoid pets in the form of heralds and archers and the appearance of these allies can be customised to change their race and origin. The Herald of War focuses on buffing the damage dealt by those around it. The Herald of Hope focuses on buffing the defensive mitigations of those around it. The Herald of Victory focuses on reducing skill power costs for those around it. Lastly, archers don't offer any buffs at all, but instead focus on doing range damage like your own private little hunter friend. Generally speaking, archers work best in solo situations, or when your concern is dealing damage, while heralds are preferable when you have other allies around you and want to buff them in some fashion. Captains have always had a bit of a reputation of being a slower class to level with historically speaking. However, like the Guardian class which suffered similarly, the captain is much better off these days for players looking to level quickly. As a heavy armour class, and one with some potent healing abilities too, the Captain is quite a sturdy class to play, and while it might not be as potent at dealing damage, it can withstand quite a lot of punishment. In groups, the Captain's role may vary depending on what the situation requires. Typically, Captains will operate in a more supportive role, buffing their allies and ensuring the group operates as a well-oiled machine as their top priority, and then offering up some supporting damage and other assistance as necessary. Depending on the instance and group, however, Captains may find themselves taking on a more specific role, but they may be operating in a tanking or healing role as their primary responsibility, and offering buffs as a secondary responsibility. This flexibility in groups does help to avoid boredom, but could perhaps be a little undesirable to some players who would prefer to stick to a class playing a certain way, rather than having to play multiple different ways depending on what the group needs. Overall, Captains function well throughout the level range of the game, and are great defensively even if their personal damage isn't the highest. Captains have always been, and always will be, highly desirable additions to a group, regardless of how they may be required to operate, so you don't have to worry about your class not being flavour of the month in any given era of the game. Captains also pair very nicely with any other class, so if you plan to level with friends or family as a duo or small fellowship, and a captain will offer a lot to your composition, particularly given its flexibility to play in damage, tanking or healing roles. The Runekeeper, along with the Warden, 
was one of the first two classes added to the game after launch, as part of the Minds of Moria expansion. The Runekeeper is designed to be strong at functioning in both damage and healing primary roles. This makes it a better class choice for players who wish to experience both roles compared to a Minstrel, as while the Minstrel is great for healing, it is less viable in a damage role in a group, even if its landscape burst damage is fantastic for solo play. Runekeepers also have the flexibility of having not one, but two damage lines. The yellow lightning tree relies on instant lightning damage attacks, which can be cast on the move, allowing the Runekeeper to kite enemies and avoid being hit. This line is also more reliant on critical hits to deal high spiked damage. The red fire tree relies more on induction based skills requiring the Runekeeper to remain still while they cast devastating fire abilities. While remaining stationary does mean you're more likely to be hit, the higher damage potential of the fire line means that enemies will not be hitting you for long. Overall, fire can do considerably more damage than lightning, particularly if you're comfortable with engaging multiple enemies at once. This also means that in groups, a runekeeper wishing to perform in a damage role should run in fire traits for optimal damage contribution, except for circumstances where fire type damage is ineffective or should be avoided such as when a boss is immune. The Runekeeper's blue line allows them to function in a primary healing role. The Runekeeper's healing style tends to be more proactive than reactive like a minstrel. By this I mean that the Runekeeper tends to want to prepare their healing in advance by placing heal over time effects on the group before they take damage, rather than simply healing them after they take damage. This playstyle has however considerably changed since the Runekeeper was first introduced as they now possess a number of instant heals and other abilities to react instantly to sudden unexpected damage taken by the group. The Runekeeper has a unique mechanic called Attunement, where they operate on a scale where they can move up to 10 points in either direction towards Dagor, meaning battle, or Nestad, meaning healing. More potent damage and healing skills may require you to have built up a minimum number of points in the appropriate direction before you can use the skill. Some skills also have more potent effects depending on your current number of points, though they may consume them and reset you back to neutral in the process. Currently, the Runekeeper suffers from slightly weaker damage in the early levels, though this is a common criticism of most classes. Lightning skills are particularly weaker in the early game, and a lack of critical hit chance at low levels doesn't help. Similarly, the Fire Tree takes a few points of investment in it, as well as the Runekeeper to get a few levels under their belt and some reasonable gear, before it really gets rolling. Since it does suffer from a poor early game right now, it's easy to overlook this class's true potential, so I'd strongly recommend sticking it out, even if you might struggle with damage or find the class slow or boring in the early game. In summary, the Runekeeper is a great choice for players who wish to perform both healing and damage as primary roles, and the ability to perform both of these roles makes them a good choice when levelling in a group with friends or family. They have a bit of a slow start right now, but really come into their own as they level up, but a late game Fire Rune Keeper is an absolute beast when it comes to area of effect damage. The Champion is Lotro's primary class for melee damage and melee area of effect damage. The Champion's three trait lines are red if you want to focus on single target damage, yellow if you want to focus on AoE damage, and blue if you want to focus on tanking. Champions are way more efficient at AoE rather than single target damage, and as things currently stand, you're better off always going for the yellow AoE trait line rather than the red single target damage trait line. As for tanking, the champion was originally envisioned to operate in a more off tanking role rather than a primary tanking role. This means that they are perfectly viable at tanking in smaller groups or operating as secondary tanks in larger groups but are not intended to be top tier primary tanks for content such as raids. These days, champions are much more capable at tanking, but still lack some strength in depth of the tanking tools available in their kit, compared to some other tanking classes. The blue tanking trait line is intended to boost a champion's ability to generate threat for increased damage. However, with the current endgame meta forcing champion tanks to choose gear with stats that are heavily defensively focused at the expense of damage stats, the champion tank deals less damage and therefore generates less threat, which makes it harder to keep aggro off heavy damage or burst damaging classes such as hunters and runekeepers. Champions cope well throughout the level range, 
and can clear landscape content with ease thanks to the high number of targets they can hit at once with their AoE skills. This can sometimes lead to some overconfidence however if you get a bit too greedy with your pulls, as this can sometimes lead to a race for you to kill most or all of your enemies before they burst you down. However, most champions would consider this part of the appeal of the class. In groups, champions would typically operate in an AoE damage role, though may have the opportunity to tank to some degree from time to time. This means that the champion will always be in the thick of the action as a frontline damage dealer, and is therefore most likely to bear the brunt of the enemy's attention. Champions are a heavy armour class however, and have a number of defensive skills to help them out of tight spots though some instances may favour other types of damage dealers, such as ranged classes, champions are always in good demand for group content. In summary, the champion is a solid choice for players looking to play a melee class, particularly one leaning towards damage dealing rather than tanking. Indeed, if damage is your priority, then I would recommend the champion as the best candidate for a melee character. I would especially recommend champions for players looking to play more of a berserker or warrior type character. Champions are a great option for both solo and group play. Before I reveal my top two, it probably is worth mentioning that it was tricky to decide which way round to sort them. They both swapped places repeatedly during the planning for this video, but in the end my experiences in the current game state led me to decide on this final order. The Minstrel was Lotro's original healing class, later joined by the Runekeeper. Since the addition of trait lines for all classes, those classes with healing trait lines such as the Captain and the Bjorning all gained more potency in their healing abilities, allowing them to also function as primary healers. Other classes such as the Lawmaster and Burglar can also provide some group healing, though in a more supportive role. The Minstrel's three trait lines are red for damage, blue for healing and yellow for buffing and support. Many Minstrels looking to heal in the later levels of the game find it more useful to trait heavily towards yellow buffing traits rather than blue healing traits, as this gives them a large boost to their buffing and supporting abilities at only a small cost of healing potential. This is due to the abundance of stats in the higher levels and the effects of diminishing returns on stats which improve your healing abilities. Minstrels are capable at all levels of the game thanks to their strong ability to heal themselves and any companions. At starting levels, Combat can be a little slower until you begin to unlock your Call cool and Cry skills, which are your more potent burst damage skills. Minstrels specialise in strong burst damage with their Calls and Cries, but do not put up as much sustained damage over time as other classes which specialise in dealing damage. In groups, Minstrels will typically be expected to operate as main healers, though they may be admitted into damage slots in the event another healer is present. On landscape, Minstrels pair nicely with any other classes, if you are levelling in a duo or small group. In summary, the Minstrel is a good choice for players who wish to play a healing role in groups, while still being effective in solo play. However, if you want to group up with other players, but have no interest in healing, then you are best off playing another class, perhaps the Runekeeper, Hunter or Lawmaster if you are looking to play ranged classes, though these will each suit different playstyles. The Minstrel is great for both levelling and landscape content. The Hunter is a ranged damage dealer who utilises a bow or crossbow to kill enemies from afar. When enemies get too close, they are also able to use their melee weapons as a last resort as well. The Hunter's three trait lines are as follows. Blue allows the Hunter to remain mobile and attack while on the move. They remain agile and fast attacking enemies at a slightly reduced range. They generally hit a little lighter, but much faster, to maintain their damage output in this style. The red trait line forces the hunter to remain stationary, allowing them to shoot further and hit harder, at the expense of speed and agility. Lastly, yellow focuses on a more supportive role, allowing the hunter to prioritise trap laying, crowd control, and a more supportive playstyle over pure damage output. Hunters are strong at all levels of the game. When playing tactically, you can prepare the battlefield with traps to keep some mobs occupied while you kill the rest. When pulling enemies from a maximum range, you should be able to kill most enemies before they reach you, something made easier by the ability to move while attacking in the blue trait line. 
Indeed, the ability to kite enemies while in the blue trait line can be useful when performing larger pulls or trying to kill dangerous foes. In groups, hunters will be expected to operate in a ranged damage role. They will, however, be focused more towards single target damage, though certainly not exclusively so, just less so than other ranged alternatives, such as a fire runekeeper. This is great for players who are looking to play a character who is not in the thick of the action always in danger, but can more or less calmly do their job from relative safety. Hunters do tend to have a bit of a reputation for starting fights with some strong opening burst damage, and thereby giving their tanks a hard time getting aggros of enemies, particularly in larger group pools. On landscape, the hunter's long attack range and good damage makes killing enemies easy. The hunter also has the benefit of unlocking many guide skills, either simply by levelling up or gaining reputation with various factions in Middle Earth, which allow you to instantly transport not just yourself, but any nearby members of your fellowship to the chosen location. It's a pretty simple concept, and probably undervalued by most of us players who have been playing for a long time. However, for newer players, who may be on their first character, the ability to rapidly navigate the world map without relying on stables or hour-long map cooldowns is a massive benefit and perk of the class. Hunters also have the ability to track nearby mobs, even those that are in stealth. This can be incredibly useful for finding rare mobs on the landscape that quests require you to kill, particularly if they would otherwise remain in stealth until you stand on top of them. The Hunter might not be the flashiest of classes, but it is one of the more straightforward classes to play. Easy to learn to a competent standard, but still with a little difficulty to truly master and get that last little bit out of your class. Overall, the Hunter is a great choice for a solo player, or someone looking to have a simpler time in group play without having to worry about complicated things like tanking, healing or crowd control. Landscape content is pleasantly easy thanks to your range and damage, and the ability to move around the world freely is a great asset to yourself and any levelling companions you may have. The only real downside is that unlike most classes, you're pretty much limited to a damage dealing role in groups. Some of you might not consider that a problem, but if you're curious about dabbling in other playstyles in group play, at least on occasion, then you might want to consider other classes as well. At the end of the day, the Hunter is a great all-rounder that doesn't really have any major flaws. That's all for part 2. Let me know what your thoughts are on the rankings I've decided. Do you agree that the 5 classes covered in today's video deserve to be in the top half, or would you rank them lower? I'd love to know your thoughts and reasons. Scripted videos such as this top 5 series take a lot of time to prepare for, so if you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could show your support by giving the video a like, leaving a comment, sharing the video, or subscribing to the channel for other videos like these and more. That's all for this time though, so I will see you guys next time.